What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, go down below the video, hit that subscribe button and make sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Over the last week or so, people have been receiving their Sega Genesis or Mega Drive Mini 2 consoles I'm no different. I ordered both the Japanese Mega Drive 2 and the North American Sega Genesis Mini 2, as well as the Japanese exclusive Mega Drive Tower Mini 2. Now, if you've seen my channel in the past, you know I have a very long history of working with these mini consoles in terms of hacking or mods that can be done. But today, I'd just like to take a look at these consoles for what they are in terms of an out of the box experience and show you guys the cool accessory kit of the Mega Drive Tower Mini 2. Now, regardless of which version you've purchased, out of the box, you're gonna get mostly the same things. You're gonna get the Genesis or Mega Drive Mini 2 console itself. You're gonna get one wired six button control pad, an HDMI cable, and a USB cable. But unlike the Japanese and the European Mega Drive Mini 2 versions, the North American Genesis Mini 2 also does come with a USB power adapter. Now I should mention that out of any of the other mini consoles that have been released, I've always felt the Sega Genesis or the Mega Drive Mini that came out in mid-September of 2019 was the best value and out of the box experience of any of the mini consoles that have been released. And as such, I was not sure that the Genesis Mini 2 would be able to live up to its predecessor. I will say though that being born in the late 80s, this is the version of Sega that I remember playing as a kid. So it does bring back quite a few fond memories. Now, as you can see, there are some visual differences between the two regional systems. And Sega did a great job trying to capture the aesthetic of each region to the correct mini console, but there are a few notable misses when it comes to the Genesis Mini 2. And although I don't personally think these are a big deal, I'm sure there are people out there that are and would be unhappy about it. The first is that on the North American Genesis Model 2 console, we had a power button rather than a slide toggle that was included on the Genesis Mini 2. And I understand that Sega likely wanted to reduce mold and production cost, so keeping the functionality and form factor the same across all regions was likely a compromise that they had to make. The other thing that's missing on both the Genesis Mini and the Mega Drive UK variant are the light power indicators that would have been present in between the power and the reset button. Again, this is likely a cost saving measure as the original release of the Japanese console did not have these lights. And I think at the end of the day, Sega designed this release around the Japanese consoles and adapted that design over to an international release. So we're just gonna have to accept the concessions as a result. Now, in terms of software, Sega has included a massive list of 60 different titles on each of the different regional consoles. They do have some region specific titles like Lunar 1 and Lunar 2, which can only be found on the Japanese versions of the console, but the game list is plenty and has a wide variety of games for any type of retro gamer looking for a fun, nostalgic experience. Each console is gonna come with 41 classic Sega Genesis titles, as well as 12 Sega CD games and seven bonus original Sega titles as well. Some of these games are gonna include things like Earthworm Jim, Fantasy Star 2, Sonic 3D Blast, Streets of Rage 3, Final Fight CD, Night Trap, and many, many more. Now, I don't want to go into a huge amount of detail about the games list, as most of you have likely already seen it or heard about it from one of my previous videos or somebody else's, but one thing to note is that you can actually change the language settings within the console, which in turn provides you access to other regions ROM set for that console. One notable example of this is with Streets of Rage 3. And by selecting Japanese as your language, you not only get access to a different UI theme, but you also get Bare Knuckle 3, which in many ways is an easier playthrough of the game than the Streets of Rage 3 we all know so well here in North America. The menu is familiar with an updated Genesis Mini 1 menu feel, with lots of UI and audio settings to adjust. This includes the ability to even adjust the audio style of the background music ranging from a more retro Mega Drive audio to a slightly newer 16-bit Genesis 2 audio sound.
Overall, these small quality of life features just add to the overall charm of the console. In terms of the gameplay itself, the console does a great job emulating games. The overall experience for both classic and Sega CD titles are awesome and is consistent regardless of which title you play through. Just like in the previous console version, you can create save states, which is a must for any sort of emulation device, and the device does only push out a 720p resolution signal as expected. Now shifting back over to the accessories kit, Sega released a Japanese exclusive Mega Drive Tower Mini 2 accessory kit. This needed to be ordered and imported directly from Japan, and it is branded for the Mega Drive rather than the Genesis. What this is is pretty much just a decoration add-on that includes the Mega CD attachment complete with a Sonic CD mini disc, a virtual racing mini cartridge, as well as some spacers. One is to be used with the original Sega Genesis Mini, and the other can be used for the Super 32X mini attachment that was sold as an accessory with the first Sega Genesis mini console. Now, all in all, the accessory kit does look amazing, and it is a really great little display piece. And Sega did say that not only will the accessory kit be in limited supply, but the consoles would also have a much smaller production run from what we have seen in the past. And you can only really find these consoles on Amazon at the moment, but once they're sold out, I'd imagine you will not be able to get them anywhere except for the secondary market. So if you've been on the fence about picking one of these consoles up, this may actually be your last chance to get one. And as always, I will leave links in the description down below, but you'll have to pick one up while supplies last. But that is pretty much all I've got for you guys in this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.